Good morning, Katakan. How are you all this morning? Uh, I am. Uh, I'm honored to be here. Uh, this is my first Katakan, and I can honestly say that uh, it truly is a community and something that I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed. So we had a great day yesterday. I'm hoping to kick us off and have uh, another good day today. I want to thank Lean Frontiers for this opportunity, uh, and it's it's a privilege to take the stage. Um, for this Katakan with the likes of Mike Rother and Dr. Jeff Liker. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm really proud to be here. Uh, I, I serve as CEO of NEA Baptist Health System. It's a small health system in Jonesboro, Arkansas. And, um, you know, if my count is right, that's two speakers from Jonesboro, Arkansas at Katakan 5. Is that correct? I mean, the rest of y'all better get with it. We got two speakers from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Uh, at Katakan. So Jonesboro is a town of about 70,000 people in the northeast corner of uh, the state of Arkansas. And um, we have a, it's very rural around us, so we have a draw area for our health system of about half a million people. And uh, our health system there has about 2,000 employees. So I'm the CEO of our 230-bed uh, hospital and a fully employed multi-specialty group practice, 110 physicians and 70 advanced practice providers. So we have a busy shop. Uh, we opened a brand new campus about five years ago, so uh, we really had the need to change how we do the work at NEA Baptist. And so today, uh, my job is to tell you the story or to share a little bit about our journey to develop a robust management system at NEA Baptist. Um, and really our journey to experiment with a principle-based management system. The first click there um, is to bring up something that I think is, um, is simple for all of us, but uh, it really carries a heavy connotation. So my presentation is simply a draft. And uh, this is powerful for us and something that uh, we've embedded to try to share with all the employees in the organization. So by the simple uh, notion of calling this presentation a draft, First, it eases my mind, right? As, we, as I present to a group of experts in the Kata field, it really eases uh, what I'm presenting to you. Uh, and that's true in our organizations. So uh, our responsibility is not just to share ideas among uh, everybody that believes in what we're doing, as we all do here, but my responsibility is to try to engage the 2,000 employees in our organization uh, to believe this way as well. And so in convincing them of that, um, this simple statement of making a draft in everything that we do is the first way that we uh, show that kata thinking pattern that we use. And so this is really about engagement and this has been a big piece of engagement for us. So my question today is simple. How is your management system working? How is it working for you in your organization? Uh, this is not a complicated presentation, but one that uh, I think really resonates to getting our message out. And we really have to have the mindset of a management system um, that is, is a lot of different parts, but is really uh, the sum of all the habits and routines that we use. And it's critical to identify those key processes that are, crit that are uh, instrumental in getting the results that you have for your organization. So we have to continually assess how these processes are working together to make, uh, to get the results that we, uh, thank you, Dwayne, the results that we need for our organization. Now, this is a fancy clicker here. All right. So uh, the management system is based on principles. And so our management system is based on a set of principles that we adopted from the Shingo Institute. And we were proud to have a Shingo site survey at our health system. Um, and it was really based on this idea of these principles. And so when we talk about this, we, we talk about these a lot. And you can see the bottom of the pyramid are the cultural enablers. So this is all about culture and how we develop that culture. And it's based on the idea of respect and humility. So whether we're coaching kata or whether we're talking about uh, key tasks or important things that we have to do, we have to have that culture of humility and respect for each other. And then if you look, the top of the pyramid is results. And so in, in healthcare, we're getting results for our patients and their families. And this really resonates. You know, I believe that healthcare is not just a job, it's a calling. 
And we're really trying to tap into that for all of the employees there because a lot of folks have trained for a long time to do this job in healthcare. And healthcare is a, is a very complex industry, but this principle-based management system has really helped us to develop, to develop that. So this is a quote I also love and is very critical in how we think about that. It's underlined, we have to get past uh, the tools, events, and programs. And if we're honest with each other, how many of you, uh, your lean implementation is a program in your organization? Uh, and we, do, we have tools that we use, and tools are critical. But we have to get past the tools, events, and programs, and we have to align our management system with principles. Because what I'm passionate about as CEO of NEA Baptist is to develop a deep culture of operational excellence. We don't want to be good tomorrow or next week or next month. We want to be good for the sustainable future. And I believe this management system based on principles is how we do that. This is what it looks like in our organization. So this is just a hallway. We have pictures of employees uh, and we layered in the principles. Now we did an experiment there too. Uh, and do you think anybody read the principles? They didn't. So we had this up in the organization, it's still up today, uh, but just putting it up is not enough. And so part of our story is really making sure that we embed this in everything that we do. And that's why uh, it's really um, important for us to continue to have this conversation. All the work that we do and everything has to relate back to this management system based on principles. So I'm gonna do a little exercise with you all. We're gonna, we gotta get engagement this morning. So I'm gonna put a couple of words, a couple of things that we use as part of our management system, and I just want you to shout out one word, what you think about when you see these, uh, the word that I have on the screen. So kata, when you think of kata, what do you think about? That didn't work well, I, I didn't get any of that. <laughs> Say that again. Routine, all right? We think of uh, the thinking pattern. And so uh, here at Katacon, I mean, we wanted to talk about the, how Kata is the real driver behind our management system. Um, it's changed how we talk at NEA Baptist. It's changed how we think about our next steps. So this thinking pattern is foundational to how we think about our lean management system. So it's not just a tool or a program, it's embedded in everything that we do uh, and we need this desperately because also, if we're honest, healthcare is still fraught with command and control environment. We, we have been trained for years and years to tell people what to do and expect them to do that. And so we have to change the idea that we don't know the answer and we really have to embed this thinking pattern. So that's critical for us. We use, this is what it looks like for us. Y'all have seen this in all the slide decks yesterday. Ours just... Uh, as Skip says, we've just baptized this. That's our, uh, that's our logo as a faith-based organization. Uh, and we, we simply put that out, and this is something that is, uh, you would see all over our organization. And this is a key quote that we continue to come back to. It's in our safe room, which you'll see in just a minute. But it's easier to act your way to a new way of thinking than to think your way to a new way of acting. And uh, this has been instrumental for us because when you start from the ground up and trying to develop a principle-based management system, you just have to take the next step. And uh, we, we continually come back to, even in conversations last night, we just have to take the next step of where we want to be with a management system. So when you think of strategy deployment, what do you think about? Yeah, we think of alignment, simple enough. Uh, this has been the anchor system to our management system. This is our strategy. And as CEO, I want every employee in our organization to know what our strategy is. We want to deliver the right care at the right place, at the right time, and at the right cost. Not fancy, but very effective because it appeals to what our patients and families want out of healthcare. This is a picture of our safe room, uh, war room, obey a room, whatever you want to call it. We call it a safe room because this room is unfinished. It's rough. It allows anybody to go in there and think about what they're doing. These are our strategies. We have visual management and status updates, very typical of a, a Hoshin Connery, that is deployed throughout the entire organization. So every department in our organization, hospital and clinic, 
has a board that looks very similar to this. Uh, and that's something that we've grown into over the last several years and, and certainly something that is instrumental because what happens is we have the kata thinking pattern that occurs on a weekly basis and or a monthly basis at every one of these boards. So as you go through where you are currently and where you want to be, where your target is, we embed that thinking pattern of kata into strategy deployment. When you think of job instruction, what do you think of? Y'all are still supposed to. Yeah, we think of standard. And how do we think of standard work? Standard work is very important. This is just one picture of uh, the training timetable that we use. So uh, not only are we creating jibs to create standards, but we're also um, making sure that we have training timetables um, on all of the huddle boards to represent the important work that we are doing. Some of those examples are uh, scope cleaning in the GI lab, reducing denials in, in clinic registrations, and ED triage process. So um, I even I heard a story yesterday about um, someone that, had, that was sharing an ED experience and the importance of having job instruction and standards in those processes so that patients and families can see that is, is very critical. We also used CADA to deploy our job instruction. So we had to make sure we don't do training for the sake of training. So we wanted to make sure that we had intentional steps of how we were going to deploy JI, where that was going to be, and we used Kata to help us do that. When you think of job relations, what do you think about? The TWI suite of services has been critical for us, and job relations is all about the relationship. So you heard it several times yesterday, it's all about people. Uh, it really speaks to, and job relations made real to us, the, the principle of respect and humility and making sure that we interact with each other that way. And so that uh, relationship between the employee and their supervisor is really key, and we learn that through job relations. And so if that is true, it's my job to make sure that uh, everybody is trained in job relations that supervises people. So again, we use Kata to deploy JR through our organization, and we now, we're, I'm proud to say that we have a standard to where uh, new managers automatically get JR training right after their orientation, because we want new managers to start with this foundation and using the foundations of job relations to deliver the results that we want, to have the thinking that we want them to have. So uh, it is all about people, and, um, and, and that's, that's very critical for us. So we talked about also that uh, the manager should be as coach. And you, you'll hear a little bit more about how we talk about the advanced group or shepherd group. But those are the really key people that help us in JR. Job methods. Anybody? Job methods? Ideas. Process. Uh, we think a process here and really mapping out the process. So we, we did this a lot yesterday in the exercise that we had yesterday afternoon as we worked on our kata. And JM really supplements the kata thinking pattern to make sure you have a clear process, a block diagram that you can uh, use uh, that, that is clear to everyone that is using it. Now, so job methods is, is very critical for us in healthcare because we have built extremely complex systems extremely complex uh, ways of doing the work that we do. Sometimes it's incredible that we get the work done that we get done uh, based on how complex our systems are. So job methods has really helped us eliminate steps and make sure that projects like the emergency department is flowing better, that we do a better job in medication reconciliation, and we do a better job of collections. Uh, idea generation is a system that we use also and when we think about idea generation, we think about engagement. So again, my role is to ensure that all 2,000 employees can, uh, can link to and, and attach to a principle-based management system. Idea generation is an incredible way to do that, to get the creativity out of folks and to make sure that they know that their ideas matter. These are not random ideas, but ideas that really focus in on the things that are important, that we've strategically aligned and that, that help us, um, and in these ideas, we're often using the kata thinking pattern to get the results. 
This is a, a picture of where we celebrated ideas through the organization. There's a, one of our physicians and some of our nurse managers sharing some of the work that they've done through idea generation, uh, a lot based on uh, Dr. Robinson's work. Uh, and we answer the question that we often do in Kata as well, what is bugging you? What can you work on through the idea generation system that is bugging you that, uh, that will help make uh, your department better? And then one of the last things, um, uh, systems that we use is the idea of shepherds. And when we think of shepherds, we think of leader development. Now, again, when we talk about people, um, this is really critical to us. So we have four shepherds groups. And uh, this is, as uh, Mike Rother describes, a, an advanced group. We call it a shepherds group uh, because they're really shepherding the work of the organization. So I, I lean heavily on this group as leaders that, are, uh, that believe in the, the management system that we use and are really carrying that work forward. So we have a Kata Shepherds group that's deploying Kata throughout our organization. We have about 35 active Kata boards at NEA Baptist. We have a Shepherds group that helps deploy job instruction and job methods. And we have learned that they're really playing off each other now, job instruction and job methods to help us uh, get to a standard and have sustainable processes in job relations and in idea generation. And so uh, this, again, is about people and developing uh, them, sharing learning and developing folks that think about uh, the management system the way that we all do in this room. And so this is one of my favorite quotes here, and this is why we lean so heavily on people. Um, only three things happen naturally in organizations, friction, confusion, and underperformance. And uh, this really resonates with me. And, and if we're going to be successful in having a sustainable system that delivers the kind of results that we want, we have to develop our people. And, and that requires leadership. And so we love the analogy of a sandcastle. You've probably heard it. It is very true. But if you've ever built a sandcastle, you know that before you finish one side, what's happening to the other side? It's, it's, it's falling apart. Uh, Skip likes to use uh, the term entropy, and entropy is true, uh, but entropy didn't appeal to anyone in our organization. <laughs> but the term fragility or being fragile did, and our management system is extremely fragile, and we carry it around like a little egg because it's so dear to us, we want to continue to strengthen and develop it but we have to do it through our people. So the idea that our sandcastle is melting somewhere today is what continues to drive us. We have to continue to build and develop and make stronger all the pieces of our sandcastle. So my question to you is the same as how I started. So how is your management system working? Uh, here's what I would propose to you in three easy steps. The first is you don't have to have these elements of your management system that we're using because every management system is going to be a little bit different. But I do think as this group, uh, all of us are passionate about Kata, uh, consider how you use Kata and how it fits into your management system. The fit is critically important. The pieces have to fit in your organization. It has to make sense. So the first step is really identifying the key systems and processes of your management system. And then the second is how do they fit? How do they interact with each other? Um, you know, and there's, there's a story behind every one, but uh, we didn't always believe in the shepherd's group at NEA Baptist for how we were going to use that. But we do today because we see how it fits. You have to see how it fits, and your team has to see how it fits into the organization. And then thirdly, how do you check and adjust your system to ensure it's delivering on the results that you need for uh, your customer? In our case, for our patients and their families. So how do you check and adjust that? We have uh, weekly cadences and monthly cadences to ensure that we're checking and adjusting the system that we have. Uh, so I hope this is helpful. Thank you for your time this morning.